Hello, I am Thomas, N1SPY, and today I have another challenge for myself. I'm going to use $25, a budget of $25, to be able to, to chase CubeSats, which are 400 miles above in the Earth's atmosphere. They're about this size, and they have beacons on them with tra which transmit signals. So I'm going to buy a radio, and I'm going to build an antenna to be able to chase these satellites. So before I get started, I wanted to go over a few things with these cube satellites. There are about 20 to 30 of them in, the, in Earth's orbit, and they can go from the size of a coffee can like this one to about the size of a shoebox. They orbit at 400 miles above Earth, and they orbit at a blinding speed of 5 miles a second. And on average, their orbit takes about 90 minutes. They're normally launched by amateur radio clubs or by universities, and they have small antennas, like paperclip antennas, and they are mostly used for amateur radio communications, and they transmit on about 440 megahertz. And when they're put up into space, they usually have about a three to six month lifetime, yet some of them have been transmitting for decades. So without further ado, let's get started. Alright, so I'm going to get started. This base right here is the base that I used for my paperclip antenna. You can go check that out for more information. And now I'm going to be using it to build my own homemade clover leaf antenna. So that requires this copper, and we're going to use it for 70 centimeters. And it's not a three leaf clover, but a four leaf clover. So we're going to cut this into four circles of 70 centimeters. And also, by the way, this is the copper wire used to hang pictures, so it's very strong and it's great at keeping its shape. So it most likely isn't fully copper, because if it was fully copper, it wouldn't be able to retain its shape and it just wouldn't be good for a circle antenna that we're going to be making. Each one is going to make a full length loop for our target frequency, 437 megahertz. I'm folding each side at the 7 inch mark, or around 18 centimeters. So I've come to my favorite part of the project, and that is soldering. So I've wrapped the four elements around each other, and I'm just going to attach it to this little base using some soldering. And as you can see, it's not going to be that strong. It's going to be actually very weak. But just for the time being, we're going to see if it works. And if it does, I'll come back and strengthen it. I'm left-handed. So this is actually very tricky, but I'm going to try and add some solder to the end of this wire. Took me a couple tries, it was actually very tricky, but I have got it down and let's see if it's going to work.
The next thing I have to do is take each one of the elements and put them into the screw like that. As you can see, each of the individual loops are tilted at about 45 degrees. We have done this so that we are able to capture the circular polarization of the, of the satellite signals. Alright, well here it is. It, um, I spent a lot of time on this and now I'm thinking we have to rename it from Cloverleaf to Egg Beater. It doesn't look like a clover, it looks kind of more like a sad wireframe pumpkin. But hey, you never judge a book by its cover. I'm really excited to start chasing some satellites with this, so let's get right into it. So I have attached the antenna to this little mini tower. It's about as tall as I am. And since it's that high up, we have to be looking for satellites that are pretty high above the horizon because if they're any lower, there are too many obstructions and we won't be able to hear them. So let's get the radio fired up. So here is the receiver I'm using. It is a software defined receiver and you can find it pretty much anywhere for around $20. So the budget of this entire project is um, somewhere around $25. And just to recap, we have made an antenna with four loops each and that makes the bandwidth wider so you can hear many different signals in a wider bandwidth. And all the loops are tilted 45 degrees and that helps with the circular polarization of the satellite signals. And also the antenna is omnidirectional because it doesn't point in any one direction so signals can come from anywhere. And the signals we are, mo we are specifically looking for are beacon signals or satellites and the way that you can tell that they are satellite signals is because they have a Doppler shift. And what Doppler shift is, is when it comes, when it right comes out of the horizon, it's on a high frequency. And when it's in the peak and when it's going down, it's going to be on a lower frequency. So we're just going to look for some Doppler shift signals. And one of the signs that it's Doppler shift is you could see it on the graph there. It is kind of tilted. So we're just going to look out for some signals and we will come back when we find one. So we have found a satellite that is coming just over the horizon and we are going to receive it and we are going to test if our cloverleaf antenna or our egg beater as we now call it works. So we found a satellite. As you can see, the frequency is gradually getting, getting lower. So we know that it has Doppler shift and thus is guaranteed to be a satellite. I'm currently not decoding it, just wanted to receive it. And well, now we know that our antenna works.
So in the battle of our antenna and the $25 budget, it looks like we did pretty good. We received some signals and the $25 budget worked out. So anyways, 73, um, have a good day.